and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you now to take a moment of silence and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given himself to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Um, our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. In our reading, the Judeans in exile have a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world, the God who subdues the ruler of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. Our reading. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. But he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will they compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? Who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. No one is missing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. God entrusted Paul with the responsibility of bringing the gospel to diverse people. Hence, the focus of Paul's ministry is not his own, but that of God's. As he is sent to freely God send God's word and share God's word with others. Our reading. St. Paul writes, If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. 
But if I do not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make the full use of my rights of the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So that I might win those outside the law, to the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save them. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessing. For God order of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for this day comes from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, first chapter. Everywhere Jesus goes, many people expect him to set them free from oppression. Everywhere he goes, he heals people and sets them free. Diseases, devils, and death are running for their lives. The forces that diminish human life are rendered powerless by Jesus. Our Gospel. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons as he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us Go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in the synagogues, and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel for today is a nuanced splendor of ministry and miracles. I have just one question, an observation, really. Peter had a mother-in-law? I've always wondered about this. That means that he had a family. That means he had means he had a wife and children. He had roots in the community. I don't usually think of Peter this way. And 
I enjoy the thought. It gives Peter so much more depth and complexity. Now, in our reading today, um, this is early. This is early in the ministry of Jesus Christ. So this was when Peter was still, still Simon. It was before he was renamed Peter the Rock. It was just when Jesus' ministry was starting to gather momentum. And as I said, in our passage, which is very nuanced, very complex, I'd like to start with the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus and his disciples had been preaching and teaching and healing the sick. They stopped at they stopped at the home of Simon and Andrew, Peter and Andrew. And there was Peter's mother-in-law. She was in bed sick with a fever. And Jesus goes to her and he, he, he holds her hand, lifts her up, and he heals her. He heals her of her sickness, of her fever. And what does she immediately do? She begins to serve them. She begins to serve them. Such an interesting detail in our gospel. And as the day wore on, Lord word was spreading throughout the region. People were coming to Jesus, and he was healing many people of their illnesses. He was casting out many demons, demons that were rendered speechless by the power of Jesus Christ. And as, as the day wore on, and then everyone went to sleep, as the, as the sun began to rise, Jesus went to a deserted place to, to meditate and to pray. Something Jesus actually does on many occasions throughout our scriptures. He, he goes away by himself to pray. And no sooner did Jesus take some time away did his disciples come looking for him. They came looking for him. They were saying, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus, Jesus heard their call. And they continued their ministry. There was much, much, much work to be done. Healing the sick, casting on demons, teaching the world about good news. In all of this, it begs the question for me. What is ministry? You know, what does ministry really mean? So we're out in the world, we're preaching, we're teaching, we're healing, casting on demons, which all of us are doing all the time, and that may not even be realize that. What does ministry mean, and what does it do for us? What does it do to us? This, this word, this hand of God. Let's begin with Peter's mother-in-law. Again, she, she, was, she was healed. She was healed by the hand of God, and she was healed immediately from her fever. And what does she do? What is her first impulse? Her first impulse is to serve, to serve others. She should have sat back and taken a loaf. But it was too exciting. And through this, this strength, this power, she began to serve those in her home out of love and out of gratitude. Because that's what happens when we're touched by the hand of God. We're changed. We're changed. Something happens. There is no turning back. You know, it's like I said in the beginning, like 
You know, say that I even think of Peter had a mother in law? Yeah. Peter had a mother in law. He had he had a whole life before he met Jesus, and then he was changed when he became the disciple of Jesus Christ. He left behind his family. He left his home. He quit his job. He left everything. Talk about go big or go home. Peter was touched by the hand of God and there was no turning back. You know, this happens to all of us. In some form, it does. And it's all different. Answering God's call is a very personal experience. Some of us are like Peter's mother and feeling the healing touch of God. And with that, the need to go and serve others, to serve others with the, with the power and the compassion of Christ. Or we can, there are those who are like Peter, those who leave everything behind go and save the world. Save the world. Just like Peter preaching the good news. And then there's so many of us who are somewhere in the middle. In the middle, feeling God's, feeling God's hand, directing us, and knowing that as soon as we feel Feel God in our lives, there is no turning back. And this is something that we do. Not because we have to. No. It's because we want to. It's out of gratitude. We are so grateful for what God does for us that we just want to do, we just want to do more. It's out of love and compassion and gratitude. But this is very important. Something that I think I know many ministers need to look in the mirror and mind themselves with this. God's work. God's work is a lot of work. God's work is never done. We need to take care of ourselves. All of us, every single one of us, we need to take care of ourselves. If we don't do that, we can't do the work of God in the world. Even Jesus, he needed time away to meditate, to pray. Even Jesus needed those moments of them to recharge so his spirit could be revitalized to so do good work in the world. We need to do the same. All of us, so many who give so much and never take a moment to take care of themselves. And as I'd like to think, if Jesus practices, if Jesus practices self-care, should we do it too? Yeah, God's work is never done. And it's not supposed to be. There's always more to do. It's always exciting. As I said, our gospel, it is a nuanced splendor of ministry and miracles. 
you were one of those miracles. All we need to do is answer God's call, be God's miracle in the world, and God will do the rest. So may the peace that surpasses all human understanding give your hearts and your minds with Jesus, the Christ of God. Amen. We continue now as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Holy God, it is your desire that all people might come to know you intimately. Lead our communities in a deeper relationship with you. May your church radiate your righteousness to all whom we encounter. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of creation, you quench the dry ground, bringing water that sustains life. Satisfy the needs of all the earth so that all living things bear witness to your verdant grace and continue to shout your praise. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of glory, during your time here on earth, you are crucified by powerful rulers who did not understand you. Grant leaders in our day wisdom and discernment that they may recognize you in the lives of the people they serve. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God of healing. You mend our wounds and relieve our suffering. Grant wholeness to all who are sick, lonely, grieving, and wearied by life's many burdens. We pray especially for Audrey Dean, Connie Seidel, Claudine Ross, Debbie Sheets, Gail McNeil, Dave McNeil, Brittany Ratchman, David Melke, John Melke, Pastor Marty and Lola Ruby, Jody Porter, John Kroll, Jerry Schmidt, Cynthia Greenwald, and June Chowitz. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God of eternity, we give you thanks for the lives of all the saints who have pointed us toward faithfulness in you. May we trust in your endless mercy and grace now and forever. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take it, eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it always, so that you may remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes again. Let us pray now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given and shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and for life everlasting. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who feast upon your heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive today's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. We will.